what happens if the market starts to completely agree with you and bake in no rate cuts this year? Does that curtail some of the sugar high? We're already starting to see some people on Wall Street wonder, OK, are we going to see yields where they are bite into equity valuations, slow some of the capital markets activity? Do you believe that, too? Absolutely. So I do think that the rate hikes that we have had and the five and a half higher than two and a half, it is already biting hard on highly levered consumer balance sheets, highly levered corporate balance sheets, and also hard on banks, in particular on regional banks. So the consequence of this is that we still have the negative effects of the transmission mechanism, monetary policy still working. It's just only working on those balance sheets that have a lot of debt. And therefore, we are working through that process. And as that sugar high starts to fade, if the stock market doesn't continue to go up, you will eventually get that effect to begin to dominate. And that's probably what we get in 2025, when you ultimately will then get the risk of a harder landing. But for now, the economy is certainly riding the wave of the increase in the stock market and crypto prices and home prices and cash flows in fixed income because of all in yields being so high, being probably higher than they've been for decades. That's very supportive for the household balance sheet. So just to make this really confusing, if we start to believe there will be no cuts, there will be cuts? Well, eventually, the Fed has the goal of getting inflation back to 2%, and inflation is not at 2%. If you look at the three-month annualized change in supercore inflation, is 8%. So the trend, in particular in supercore, is really not the Fed's friend here. So the worry is it might take a lot longer to get down to 2%. So that fight against inflation is not over. And the consequence of that is that we may get the market environment for 2022 to come back. Because in 2022, we had stocks down, rates higher, and obviously this was not good for markets and for your 60-40 portfolio. And that environment is at risk of coming back if we're not done fighting inflation. Torsten, what about hikes? People are actually starting to talk about this. I think, and this is of course in your world, I think that the likelihood of that is still relatively low because there's just so many complications in doing that and in saying, well, we were wrong and now rates are not going down, now rates are going up again. There's also some challenges with the base effects of inflation, some more technical things about we got to go either in July, otherwise it'll be in December or next year because we have the base effect is very supportive for inflation for the second half of this year. So it's also going to be quite challenging for the Fed to get all that in place in time to turn things around and say, maybe we need another hike or two. I think they were rather, from a transmission mechanism perspective, keep rates higher for a little bit longer, maybe one or two quarters, and then achieve their goal of getting the economy and inflation to slow down.